In this lesson, we will learn to identify ligamentous injuries in the lower extremities on ultrasound imaging. The two most common ligamentous injuries in the lower extremity are the anterior talofibular ligament of the ankle and medial collateral ligament or MCL of the knee. We'll begin by looking at the anterior talofibular ligament, which is situated between the fibula or lateral malleolus and talus bones of the foot. The foot should be positioned in plantar flexion and inversion as this adds a slight stretch to the ligament for optimal scanning. Let's look at the longitudinal image of the anterior talofibular ligament. In order to obtain that image, we need to bridge lateral malleolus with talus to get the anterior talofibular ligament. So I'm placing my probe, looking at the two bony landmarks. On the left is lateral malleolus or fibula. On the right is talus. Between the two bones, you can see hyperechoic fibrillar structure extending between the two bony interfaces. This structure right here is anterior talofibular ligament. This longitudinal image shows a normal anterior talofibular ligament between the fibula and talus. Once identified, the ligament is then inspected for integrity, focal defects, and abnormal signals in or around the ligament. The attachment sites are inspected for bony defects that would indicate avulsion type injuries. These findings help with the grading of ligamentous injuries. This image shows the longitudinal view of a normal medial collateral ligament of the knee. This image shows non-visualization of the ligament fibers of the anterior talofibular ligament. Also note the bony irregularity of the attachment site on the fibula or lateral malleolus suggesting avulsion type tear of the ligament. This longitudinal view of the anterior talofibular ligament shows a focal hypoechoic defect in the ligament closer to the fibular attachment site suggestive of a grade 2 sprain or partial tear. The medial collateral ligament or MCL is the other common ligamentous injury in the lower extremity and is identified on the medial aspect of the knee between the femur and tibia. The MCL has two layers, the deeper layer and the superficial layer. The deeper layer blends with the medial meniscus and attaches on the adjacent femoral and tibial bony surfaces, known as meniscofemoral portion and meniscal tibial portion. The superficial layer is longer and extends more proximally on the femur and more distally on the tibia. Let's look at the medial collateral ligament in longitudinal view. In order to find the medial collateral ligament, we need to keep the probe in long axis orientation along the ligament fibers on the medial aspect of the knee. We first identify the medial joint space. On the left is femur, on the right is tibia. Between the two bony interfaces, we have medial meniscus, and just outside the medial meniscus, we can see the fibrillar pattern of medial collateral ligament. Let's follow this ligament proximally as it attaches on femur. And now let's follow this ligament distally as it overlies the tibia and it extends further. And this is where we see the attachment of MCL fibers on the tibial surface. Now remember, this is the area where the pessensory tendons are crossing just above the medial collateral ligament. This is the distal portion of the MCL. MCL partial tears or grade 2 sprains can be localized to either the deeper or the superficial layer. When the deeper layer is involved, we can further localize it to either the meniscofemoral portion or meniscotibial portion. In full thickness tears, both the superficial and deeper layers are torn with adjacent effusion and or hemorrhage. Here is an example of MCL tear on ultrasound. This is a longitudinal view of the MCL. We can visualize a grade 2 sprain or partial tear of the MCL in this image. More specifically, we see that the fibers of the menisco femoral portion of the deep layer are involved. 